Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Uh, we will continue our discussion on the types of bones. And as you saw toward the end of uh, the last uh, segment, that a uh, backbone that is also called vertebral column actually is an example of irregular bones and it actually consists of 33 bones and each bone is called a vertebra so vertebra is actually an example of irregular bone so in this segment we will see the structure of the vertebral column or the backbone in in detail so learning objectives of this lecture include to understand basic structure and functions of vertebral column that is also called spinal column or backbone. It is called vertebral column because each individual bone is called a vertebra. Spinal column because spinal cord passes through a hole uh, in each of these bones uh, and it is called backbone as well. We will see five parts of vertebral column that is cervical vertebra, thoracic vertebra, lumbar vertebra, sacrum and coccyx and two types of curves in vertebral column they are lordosis and kyphosis and the references for this lecture are the same as the previous lectures on uh, the structure of human musculoskeletal system the first book is the facts on file illustrated guide to the human body by the diagram group and engineering physiology basis of human factors engineering slash ergonomics by Comer et al. So I would like to explain the structure of human backbone with the help of a freehand sketch. And I would recommend you to draw uh, along with me. So uh, human backbone actually consists of four curves. And uh, this one actually is uh, the anterior side or uh, the front side this one is the anterior side that is actually also called the front side and this is the posterior or back side uh, so you can see that there are actually four curves. So this is the first curve, approximately till this point. Then we have a second curve, and then there is a there is a third curve, and we have the fourth curve. So this uh, first curve in the backbone actually has uh, seven vertebrae. The second one has 12 vertebrae. The third one, third curve has five vertebrae and actually the last curve has total nine but uh, they further have actually two parts so let me uh, further differentiate between them there is actually a final part of uh, the backbone as well but that curve as a whole consists of uh, uh, totally nine bones but there are five separate and finally we have four separate. So uh, five vertebrae and four vertebrae, but they form one curve. So these first seven vertebrae actually form our, our neck. The next 12 form your back side of the of the ribs you can say the back side of the of the chest so you can also call it the form your upper back 
then five vertebrae they form your uh, what we call lower back. The next five, they are the end of the backbone, and then the next five plus four. And you can say that they are also called, uh, these four especially are also called the arterial bone. So they attach actually to these five as a whole make a joint uh, with, uh, with the pelvis, so they attach to pelvis. And these four are sort of independent. So these are tied to pelvis as a whole. So these are total, you can count, uh, total 33 vertebrae. Now you can see that uh, these seven, they are forming the neck and their technical name is, they are called cervical vertebrae, cervical. So it's important to remember the technical names as well. So these are cervical vertebrae. So again, vertebra is singular and vertebra is plural and they are designated as C1 to C7. The next 12 actually that are the part of upper back, they are, are so called thoracic vertebrae. So ribs attached to them and these are designated as T1 to T12. Then we have five vertebrae of, of, the, of the lower back and they are called lumbar vertebrae and they are designated as L1 to L5. And then we have five uh, more vertebrae, they are called sacral vertebrae or they are simply called sacrum and they are designated as S1 to S5, S1 to S5. And these four are called coccyx and they are fused together so they are not further designated. So these are the four curves. Now you might have noticed that uh, the first curve the lumbar curve, sorry, the cervical uh, curve, and the third one, the lumbar curve, these are convex on anterior side and concave on posterior side. So they are same in, in shape. So they are convex on the front side and concave on the back side. So such curves are, uh, such curve is called lordosis or lordotic curve. Uh, they, uh, these two curves have this shape. So that is called lordosis or lordotic curve. So the curve in the, for example, thoracic vertebrae and in the sacrum and coccyx is having opposite, opposite shape. Its shape is just like this. So it is concave on the anterior side and convex on posterior. So both these curves, this one and that is made by the thoracic vertebrae and the one made by a combination of sacrum and coccyx. So that is the curve is called kyphosis or kyphotic curve. Now this lordotic curve uh, formed by the cervical vertebra and lumbar, these two curves are, are actually having more movement. So they are more mobile. So they are, uh, for example, mobility as a whole is more as compared to uh, the other two curves. So mobility is high 
in the vertebrae of the neck and vertebrae of the lower back. So they, they are uh, lordotic cuts. And this mobility is relatively less in the paphotic curves. Mobility is here less. So we will see this in more detail. And what is meant by mobility? Because mobility can be within the vertebra and the vertebra making uh, joints with uh, some other bones. So intervertebral movement, you can say, is more in cervical and lumbar. There, there is slight movement within the thoracic and there is actually no movement within sacrum and coccyx, but sacrum further makes uh, what we call sacrum iliac joint with pelvis. So that joint has uh, some movement, but within the vertebrae of sacrum and coccyx, there is as such uh, no movement, but there is a lot of movement, free movement possible within cervical and lumbar vertebrae. So that is the basic structure of human backbone and you can see from here very easily that at the, at the proximal end, the backbone attaches to the lower part of the, of the skull and at the distal end, it, it is forming it is forming a joint with, uh, with pelvis. So backbone is sort of uh, uh, the, the joining point between your, your skull and the lower extremities. So you may remember that this is the part of axial skeleton. So this is actually the central part of your uh, skeletal system. So we will see these points in further detail. So there are alternate layers of bones and bones are called vertebrae and cartilage that is actually intervertebral disc. So this, uh, this disc is actually shock absorber and we will see it uh, in one of the following slides, uh, its structure and where it is located. But there is actually one intervertebral disc between two vertebrae except for the first two and uh, toward the end as well, but for most of the vertebrae, there is a disc uh, between two adjacent vertebrae. So it, it is made up of cartilage. So it is a soft tissue. So it absorbs and distributes shocks, as I just mentioned. So it also avoids the, avoids the vertebrae landing with each other during movement. So this is a very important part of the backbone, the intervertebral disc. As we saw, vertebrae are of two types, movable and immovable. Uh, we will come to this point uh, later as well. So we have already seen this, that uh, cervical vertebrae, they form the neck, thoracic, they form the attachment for the ribs. So that is the, uh, that is the upper back. We have lumbar vertebrae, they form the lower back and then we have sacrum that, that consists of uh, five fused vertebral bones that are joined, joined to, the, to the pelvis. The end point of the vertebral column is coccyx. Yes, it consists of four fused bones. So these bones are fused as well as these bones are fused. So sacral and coccygeal bones are fused. So they, they appear to be one bone. As we saw that there are total uh, 33 bones, so seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbars. They are movable and especially this, uh, this cervical and lumbar have more movement and thoracic has relatively uh, less movement. And intervertebral joints between sacral and coccygeal are, are immovable. So there is no relative movement between these bones. And as we just saw that there are four curves, so you can see the actual image. So this is the first curve that is formed. And then there is a second curve, then a third curve, and finally a fourth curve. And again, first and third curve are lordosis, 
this one and this one and the second and last curve are air forces so cervical and lumbar curves are convex on the front side and concave on the back and thoracic and sacrum plus coccyx curves are concave on the front side and convex on the back side so they are the curve for the curves another thing that you might notice that these cervical vertebrae for example appear to be different in structure than the thoracic ones and the thoracic seem to be to be different in structure than the lumbar one and sacrum and coccyx appear to be one bone actually for example these five bones appear to be one bone and these four bones also appear to be one bone and also as you see that the size is not the same for thoracic vertebrae you can see that the size of the upper few vertebrae is is greater as compared to the lower few and in lumbar the size of the upper few is smaller as compared to the lower ones so uh, this is an interesting point as well uh, to be noticed and especially in the case of lumbar the size increases because of increase in load on the lower vertebrae so the structure of vertebrae in each group the varies is different than the vertebrae in another group so these are different in shape than these and and so on and especially the last nine are very different and their sizes also vary so as a whole this is called uh, the vertebral column or spinal column or backbone and we we have seen it that here actually at this point the sacrum makes sacroiliac joint with the with the ilium so that is a movable joint but joint between these bones within these bones they are they are immovable but the joint of sacrum with the ilium is a is a movable joint and similarly joints formed by these vertebrae at these interfaces these are called uh, facet uh, joints these joints are are not very much clear from this figure but they they are formed at uh, they are formed in the uh, in in the in the form of pairs so these joints are slightly movable the movement is more in this set and in this set as compared to the thoracic the cervical and lumbar curve is called lordosis and spinal curves are either again that lordosis or lordotic curve is convex on the anterior and concave on posterior and kyphotic curve is concave on anterior and convex on posterior so you can observe the same thing in this figure we have seen this designation so there are seven cervical vertebrae they form the neck designated c1 to c7 in thoracic there are 12 vertebrae Now they are attached to the sort of back of the chest, designated as T one to T twelve. Lumbar five from the lower back, designated L one to L five. Sacrum five bones. They are attached to the pelvis. S one to S five and coccyx bones fused together, also called tail bone, and they don't have any designation. So I hope the overall structure of the backbone is clear. Uh, we will continue with this with this discussion and see some more details related to the uh, backbone thank you very much